Let's jump right in with an introduction to construction scheduling. Now I know many of you probably have questions and in this course we're going to try and answer a few of those. We're going to be covering a high level overview of the construction industry, diving into a little bit about what a scheduler does, and then covering overall the journey you'll be taking on this course. If there's one thing to take away from this course, it's this. The construction industry is massive. There are projects going on all over the globe and they present opportunities all over the globe in which you get to choose where you want to work, what company you want to work for, and what project you want to support. It took me years to actually comprehend just how big the construction industry is. So getting into the construction industry opens up a huge opportunity for you. One of the easiest ways to get in the construction industry and unlock all of that opportunity is through construction scheduling. Unlike many of the careers listed on the screen and many more, construction scheduling doesn't require a college degree. It doesn't require technical training and many of the certifications are nice to haves. Now, once you've gotten into the construction industry, you could pivot elsewhere. That's another great thing about scheduling that not a lot of people talk about. Once you're in the construction industry, it's much, much easier to go find jobs elsewhere in the industry. I know many schedulers who started out who then became project managers, engineers, or safety technicians. You go find the job that makes you happy and you're most fulfilled at. A lot of people, though, love construction scheduling, and that's great because it has an awesome growth potential. You can very quickly become an entry-level scheduler, and in a few short years, double, even triple your salary with a little hard work and the right guidance. Now, as part of that growth, there'll be different roles and opportunities available to you. This isn't a comprehensive list. There are a ton of different avenues you can take after you become an entry-level scheduler and you start to build up your experience. But I just wanted to give you a flavor of what's available there. I mean, look at the far end of this. You can become an entrepreneur, you can own your own business, you can be a vice president or director. There are a ton of different growth opportunities as you go. So as you start your journey, just keep that in mind. What do you think the end game looks like for you or what direction would you like to head or have construction take you? Because as you can see, there's a ton of different options. Now let's switch gears a little bit. What does a construction scheduler actually do? I get asked this question all the time. Micah, what's a scheduler do? I've boiled it down to one very simple sentence. A construction scheduler helps to manage time. Just like a cost engineer would help manage the budget of a project, a scheduler helps to manage the time. When activities are taking place, what activities impact other activities, and when the project will finish. It's as simple as that. Well, not that easy. Let's dive into what a scheduler does. This is the stuff that you'll be performing on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, so we want to make sure you're comfortable with it. If you're not, that's okay. This job isn't for everyone, but I want you to understand going into it what the expectations are and what you'll be doing. I remember wanting to be a chef when I was growing up, and then when I was older I found out that many chefs just cook the same thing over and over and over again and I was like I don't think that's for me we don't want that situation to happen to you so really there's three things a scheduler does the first is help create schedules and plans so you'll sit down with a project team you'll collect information like the design permitting time procurement timelines and you'll enter that into the schedule you'll put in activities like uh, get permit ABC and you'll apply a duration to it into a piece of scheduling software. You'll do that for all the known information and you'll link it together. Then you'll sit down with a team in either workshops or offline reviews and you'll go through the schedule to make sure that you've created a plan that works. Then once that plan's created, you'll update it. That means on a weekly basis, you'll go through those activities you created. You'll gather how far they're along. You'll get that from people out in the field, project managers, engineers, and whoever else you need to, and you'll enter that progress into the schedule. Some activities will finish earlier, 
some will finish later, some will have to be changed in their sequence. You'll go through on a pretty regular basis, weekly or biweekly, sometimes monthly, and make sure that the plan represents what's happening out in real life. And lastly, you'll analyze that plan. Are there opportunities to pull it in? What are the biggest risks of the project? There are standard reports you have to run every single month and provide an owner potentially what they're doing. I hope this provided a good summary of what a scheduler does. There are plenty of resources that we'll provide that will give you even more insight into this. Another question you might have is who do you schedule for? What are the companies that you actually perform these jobs at? Now there are basically three different types of entities. They're general contractors, they're consultants, and they're owners. General contractors are the companies that are actually performing the work. They're the ones building the project. And owners are the ones who are paying for the project. Consultants come into play if the general contractor or the owner doesn't have enough people or resources to meet the demand the project requires. That's where an owner or a general contractor will hire a consultant to bring in additional scheduling support. All three of these entities are perfectly fine to work for, and it really comes down to where you're at in your career and also your personal preference of what jobs you want to support and who you want to work for. What projects do you work on? Now up on the screen, as you can see, I've made a linear scale of low dollar value projects all the way up to super mega multi-billion dollar projects. And there is a sweet spot for construction scheduling. On the low end, if the project's not complex, they typically just don't need construction schedulers. A lot of that can be handled by the project manager. And the reason why we want to go up on the high end, and as a general rule of thumb, I use about 500 million, is because at that size, the project is complex enough to require a full-time construction scheduler. And also, on these bigger projects that are more complex, there's just more opportunity. And companies who are delivering these bigger projects, there's even further opportunities within them. And so as you, we go through this course and we look to find you a job in construction scheduling, it's just a good rule of thumb to fall back on and to understand, are these projects big enough to provide the opportunities that it's going to allow your career to grow? Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, how do I land a job in construction scheduling? You like the job, you're impressed by the salaries, you're impressed by the growth, and you want to go out there and land a job in construction scheduling. There are three basic skills that are critical to pick up to go out there and land your first job. The first is understanding the basics of construction and how things are built. Do you understand how a patch of ground goes to having a building on it and how that building is commissioned and handed over? Now you don't need a PhD detailed explanation of any of this, but you do need to understand some of those high level building blocks. The next is understanding the basic principles of scheduling. Like any industry and anything you do in life, there are some basic best practices that are critical to be aware of. And then lastly, you need to get some familiarity with the scheduling software. I would say 70% of jobs are done with Primavera P6. And if we can get you some hands-on experience with Primavera, it will be perfect for landing a job. We're going to talk more about these skills later, but here's an introductory overview of the three things you really need. I wanted to highlight a little bit of the journey of this course that you'll be headed out on. So as we just discussed, we need to brush up on some of those skills. Those will help you speak more fluently in interviews and also let you know what you're getting into when you start your job. The next phase of this course is all about finding jobs. We give you some tricks and tips and tactics to go find those entry level jobs that you can apply for and land. Next, we give you the skills to help you land that first job. What are the key things to do in preparing for interviews? How do you nail that interview? What should your resume and cover letter look like? And then we don't just leave you there. Because after you get that job, we want you to start off on your career in the best way possible. So we give you what you should do to nail those first 90 days. We're here because we want you to succeed. Now, it's time to go get that job.